everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I am your host, Paul Krieger, and I'm joined by a motley crew of friends. First off, my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. We've got the one and only John Sakari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, joining us this week. Jeff Haslam. And the senior, senior sales associate <laughs> with DVC Resale Market, it's Mr. Derek DeBoer. Put hey now, up. and Paul, Paul, here's my tip of the day. Never use the word motley and then bring up your wife's name immediately right after that. <laughs> That's just my friendly tip of the day. <laughs> I'll probably pay for that one later, even on her, <laughs> even on her birthday of all days. So, um, and this, this will age well because it's like two, three weeks after and, and we're wishing her a happy birthday yet again. So, happy, you have a birthday happy, month. A birthday happy month. birthday. Whole month. Have a, celebrating. Have a great, great birthday month. We're going to keep wanting presents for the next three or four weeks if we keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, every, every week she's going to watch the show. Where's my present? She already got a banjo. Now she needs a mandolin and a bass and a guitar, and she'll have a full bluegrass band. And a bassoon. Yep. And a bassoon. I'm holding auditions and later. And yeah. she needs John's creepy rofer puppet, too. On so. the <laughs> on the next episode, you're each going to have to bring an uh, instrument with you and do at least a one-minute just solo improvisation uh, to, uh, to, to be on the show. So okay. get, re get ready for that one. Well, thank you all for joining us for this week's episode of the DVC show. Uh, we are moving into kind of a new segment that we're going to call at this time, Love It, Don't Love It. So we're going to go through some random topics about Disney World and Disney Vacation Club and go around and get everyone's opinion as to whether or not this is something they love or something that they're just not too fond of. Uh, but as always, if you love the content that we produce here at DVC Fan, please show some love for our sponsors over at the world of DVC. DVC Resale Market, where you can buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract. Monera Financial, yeah. who can help you with that contract purchase. Or the DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy, rent out some points, or rent your own points. But uh, other than that, this was actually an idea of yours, Amy, that you kind of came up with in terms of just putting together some ideas of what things we might love or hate? Uh, yeah, some are DVC specific. Some are just Disney around Disney because, you know, if you're a DVC member, you're experiencing pretty much all that Disney has to offer. So no, no nobody on this call loves Disney. We, we all just are DVC members. We don't we don't step <laughs> foot in anywhere other than our resort, uh, our specific unit, um, <laughs> that little corner tile that we actually own. Um, but uh, so the first one up on the list is actually a relatively new Disney Vacation Club edition, and that is the Boulder Ridge refurbishment over at Wilderness Lodge. So this was something that was uh, a long time coming. People were hating on Boulder Ridge, I would say, pretty aggressively for a while there. I even got called out on it at one point. Someone that was trying to rent points was like, why are you hating on Boulder Ridge when I'm trying to rent my points there? And I'm like, well, I can't lie. It reminds me of The Shining at the moment. Like, I'm not going to lie to the people and just tell them, oh, yeah, it's great. It's like the Riviera. It's the most beautiful resort on property. So <laughs> it's, it's refreshed. It looks new. We stayed there recently. Um, I will kind of kick things off and say that I loved the refurbishment. I think it was a wonderful sort of combination of uh, adding Disney characters to the room by doing it in a very classy manner uh, and a very upscale manner. But um, we'll kind of go around the room. Panda, I'll start with you. Uh, what are your thoughts on Boulder Ridge? I just watched Amy's video on it, which was great, by the way. I mean, I know it's your video too. I just saw Amy in it. <laughs> but what I liked is that, you know, people are always going left and right. So you very nicely panned and showed me the room. I love it. It is bright. It is nice. The only thing I questioned was the color of the couch, that pink. But it actually works in the room. The artwork to me is out of this world and the hallway no longer looks like I'm going to be met by twins asking me to come <laughs> play with them. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I loved it. I thought it was really, really nice and tastefully done. Just like you said, I didn't even realize the shower, I think it was the shower curtain, Amy, that had the characters until you pointed it out. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't, I like when I don't see it unless it's, you know, pointed out. It's not in your face. Yeah. They replaced the old lady in the bathtub from The Shining with a very nice Disney character. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Shower curtain. Yeah. So perfect. Jeff, what do you even thought? the artwork in the pull the pull down bed. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Especially how it kind of goes through and and carries kind of a theme with it. I think it's like Donald yes. and and Huey, Dewey, and Louie that are kind of on a- the outside. Acorns. And- yeah, like they're spending, they're they're having a wonderful day, and then you pull down the bed, and they're all tucked in and camping for for nighttime and and ready. So it's really cool how that that theme gets carried through. Jeff, what are your thoughts on Boulder Ridge? Yeah, I I love it. I love the new refurb. Um, I haven't seen it live. In fact, that's the only DVC property that I haven't stayed at. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to doing that this fall. But um, I love it. I think Boulder Ridge in general, I love. It's closer to to Geyser Point, which is important, but um, the lobby with the trains and the Walt Disney history himself, like just that property in general, I think is often overlooked because of Copper Creek. But um, with these new refurbishments, I'm really excited to stay there. So I'm team love it for sure. Derek, how about you? Of course, I'd come across as a real jerk if I said I hated it. No, I love it. (laughs) And I'm trying to do like what's 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 our symbols? Because we don't have like paddles, so I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> this is my my love symbol. Yes. What's the I don't love, love symbol? <laughs> I don't know. Like it, a heart crumbling and falling apart like this. <laughs> yeah, I love it for the exact same reasons that you guys have said. When I stayed there a couple of years ago before the refurb, I was like, oh my god! Like you, it really was horrible. I mean, it was, I was all the way down at the far end of the hall. The room was so dated and just needed that love. And then once the word got out that that refurb was coming, it was like, God, everybody's excited. Even the prices start to go up a little bit because that's what happens when a resort gets a big refurb like this. We've had so many people add on points or buy at Boulder and I could not be happier for them just because I do consider them, you know, even though they're at the same location, I consider them a different resort. It's got a different feel in that, you know, small little check-in atrium with, like you guys said, the trains and all the nooks and crannies to be able to sit and have coffee or a drink, easy access, like Mr. Haslam said, to get to Geyser Point, which is all right there. And the rooms look incredible. So I, I don't think they could have come out any better. And I agree with you too, Paul, that it's the right mix of Disney. And I know it might be a topic for a different show, but I feel like many times I feel like these refurbs are kind of getting away from Disney and they can have this feel like I could be in a Sheraton room or I could be yes, like in a yes, Hilton yes. room. And the reason I'm staying at a Disney Vacation Club resort is I want Disney. I want to be reminded that I'm you know at Walt Disney World. So give me hidden characters here and there. Give me some, you know, fun little comical bright surprises throughout the room and i think this resort did it perfectly so yeah yeah. it It, it wasn't the generic it was still modern and clean but it wasn't generic yeah Mm -hmm. right yeah and that kind of that kind of moves us into our next topic pretty well and i'll start with amy and uh, you can answer boulder ridge and this at the same time but there's been a lot of chatter both in the dvc fan facebook group online about the recent disney vacation club refurbishment trends there's been some people that have not loved it essentially in terms of this kind of feel uh and we we made a joke about it when when the polynesian tower was announced and slapped a marriott logo on it um you know because that was kind of the feel of what this was it got away from the traditional polynesian theming now the vert's still out on that we'll wait until it's actually built and developed uh but the same can be said for the rooms they're kind of going an easier route with some of the stuff that is maybe a little bit less wear and tear um but making it I don't want to use the word sterile, but I don't. I don't really know what else to cl- kind of say there. It's it's kind of moving in that up upper classy direction, but taking away some of the Disney touches that we know and love. So love it, don't love it, Boulder Ridge and and the current refurbishment trends. So yeah, so I definitely love Boulder Ridge. I I like the new refurbishment. It, we had stayed very you know not too long before it started when the rooms were still kind of outdated and we were a little bit hard on it uh but that new refurbishment really brought just a whole fresh look it's still to me they kept that rustic vibe but had the the great little disney touches like the artwork uh some of the artwork in the bathroom was like watercolor and but you know still disney-esque um so i really liked it and i i some people do disagree about the the track that the refurbishments are going down but to me 
those clean that those clean lines that's fresh white linens uh, i like that style and they can they can do that and have this you know wooden floor that i don't know it's not really wood vinyl or whatever that that stays cleaner and these platform beds that are more functional where you can put your you know store your luggage under it and i i don't know i think it's more of a generational thing like people who are used to patterns and things on their bedding and you know what i mean like like to me that's a that's a a generational preference or as we stick more with like solid colors and stuff and so and it's not a knock on what anyone's taste it's just that how you know the things that were popular when you were you know growing up or you were putting your house together, you know, might not be what it is, what's popular now. And I think Disney is leaning towards what is more, more popular now. The things that people see on like HGTV that, that they love. I'm all about that. I, I was used to be an HGTV junkie. So. Yeah. And I would, I would go to say, you know, what's popular now, but also what's functional now, you know, the Disney vacation, when some of these resorts were built, you know, boardwalk, Polynesian, some of the early resorts at Disney, contemporary, even though Bay Lake is relatively newer, what was functional for a Disney vacation that was maybe two or three days or two or three nights is not functional now that most people are coming down here for four plus nights and they need more space, they need more uh, area to move around especially with the Disney Vacation Club trends, you have people shoving five people into these studios. So you've got to utilize every square inch of that space as much as you can in most of those scenarios. So um, yeah, I I, I kind of agree with that thought process. Jeff, um, what are your thoughts about the current DVC refurb trends? Love it or don't love it? I'm going to say like it. I don't love it, but I like it as a friend. (laughs) Um, <laughs> is there is there a, is there a hand symbol for that? <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. I don't know. Um, no, it, it's good overall. Like I, I I'm kind of with Derek, and I, and I do enjoy the subtle theming and you know the hidden characters and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like they've gone away from that quite a bit, and until Boulder Ridge anyway. So maybe that's a change that they're they're trying to find that happy medium. But um, I don't know the the white linens and the clean lines and stuff. I can get that anywhere. I can get that at a Marriott. I can get that at a Hilton. There's something to be said for staying at Disney. And that's why up until, you know, I bought DVC, we were pop century people. And now that's a little too much. That's like Disney threw up in your face a little bit, but that's Mm -hmm. kind of why we went there is the kids loved it. So I don't know. That's why I say I don't love it, but, I'll give it a like. It's well, and I've been critical of that recently as well in terms of the the bed, you know, the bed runner and the throw pillows and some of just the small things. Like the the white clean linens are nice, but it's nice to also have a little bit of character on the beds, on the couches, and bring a little bit of back. They've done that in some resorts. Others, they've still got everything put away. Um, I, yeah, I do miss the I miss the throw pillows. It's weird because some random resort rooms will have them and some won't. Yep. The bed runners, I don't think we're going to ever see those come back i always loved the way they looked but you know the more the more you think about it how often were they washed and you know what i mean it's the same for the throw pillows so like you got to keep those things in the back of your head too like they look great but like from a sanitary standpoint maybe they weren't the most functional coming soon dvc room tours with a black light <laughs> let's not well, and they got they got rid of the throw pillars because Derek kept having pillow fights with him. He kept ruining them. So, no, that's how that's how he smuggled his lamps out of the rooms. Is what? he talking? Wait, you're, Derek, you're we, muted. We can't hear you at all, Derek. So, but we're gonna make no, up God. what you're saying. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> no, I said just don't expose too much with that blacklight tour because we don't want our annual dues to go up. We want to keep them low. <laughs> We're gonna need need emergency uh, refurbishment here at the at this resort. So, <laughs> Panda, give us your thoughts uh, on the current refurbishment trends. Love it, don't love it. You know, I I'm loving it. If Boulder Ridge is the trend, and I'm Team Amy, even though I'm older, I'm Team Amy with the clean lines. I I want my bed to have white linen and clean lines because it just makes me feel like you can fall asleep and it's clean. So I don't think you have to have one or the other. I think you still, the Boulder Ridge showed, you can have that and still have Disney touches that show you you're in Disney. So I think if that's the trend, I'm loving it. Give me both. Give me 
modern, clean lines, you know, white linen, stuff like that. But then give me the accents, give me the the artwork, give me some lighting, give me some nice functional yep. Disney things. And the next one on the docket is actually Boulder Ridge. They're supposed to be starting that, or not Boulder Ridge, Boardwalk. Um, Boardwalk Resort is supposed to be starting their refurbishment this fall. We actually will have a video going up very soon of us kind of walking around Boardwalk, talking a little bit about not only the setup that they're already starting to do for the refurbishment, they got part of the parking lot blocked off, and they're going to most likely be dropping some trailers there for the construction progress, and that's going to be a, kind of a staging zone for it. So they're gearing up to get started with this. We've not seen any idea of what this looks like. I have to imagine they're probably going to give us a sneak peek of that come the condo association meeting. In a yeah, couple. If, if you want to talk about one resort where I've really, like, I'm a little bit afraid of what's going to go away. Boardwalk, we modeled our bedroom yeah. in our um, our old house after Boardwalk. Like literally picked the colors of the walls to match and found artwork that looked like the Ferris wheel and, you know, the roller coaster. So I am a little worried to see what they do with it because I'm going to miss some of those things if they take them away. But. Yeah. Is it a total like hard goods or is it just soft for boardwalk? Yeah. It's, it's full uh, on hard. Yeah. It is full hard on. Okay. Full everything. Good. So they're going to, they're going to gut that place, which they need to do. We just stayed there and it definitely needs some love in the moment. So. Yeah. And Derek. I think that last, that last boardwalk hard refurb for me was the first time that it sunk into me. Like, God, this doesn't feel like Disney anymore like they you know they remove this they remove that some of the lighting some of the whimsical touches so i hated that last boardwalk refurb and i'm a boardwalk owner since like 1999 so um i i would say with the current trend i hate to pull a jeff but i'm kind of if the current trend i love is the murphy bed situation just because growing up every parent out there will attest anytime you don't have to pull out the couch find a place to put the cushions in the corner of the room at night and walking around. I'm a huge fan of. So anything with the Murphy beds, I love. But other than that, I'm just not a fan of going too kind of sterile, clinical. I miss my Disney touches. I, I'd like to be able to walk in to like the boardwalk used to have, for example, like this crazy lamp. I mean, it was like one of the coolest lamps that you could possibly see at the board. It was so unique and just different. And when I went back and they did that refurb in the room, my wife turned to me and goes, she goes, I, I, I feel like this could be like a regular Wyndham hotel or like a regular Hilton hotel. She's like, I miss my whimsical boardwalk. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Amy. I'm fingers and toes crossed that, uh, mm -hmm. They don't mess it up. <laughs> I have a pillow that's actually from Boardwalk, a throw pillow, because they they sell like older stuff at the Lakeland Antique Mall in Lakeland, oh, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is from like the Boardwalk style before this refurb. So, yeah. Yep. Sits in your office. Yeah. Derek, I feel like you're reading ahead. Uh, the next question I had was Murphy beds and whether or not we oh. love oh. Murphy beds. So we know we know you do. Panda, thoughts on Murphy <laughs> beds? <laughs> The ones where the couch stays and the bed comes down, amazing. Like, was this technology not around 20 <laughs> years ago? How come? It's just, I love it. Love it. And it's exactly for the reason, too, that Derek said, you got the cushions everywhere. It's nice to just leave it, pull it down, be done with it. So I'll pull and I like that they have the USB now when you pull it down in the wall, like a light and stuff. They yeah. usually have it now. Well, see, nice. and that's, that's what makes me say, and since we got the trend going of like, like it, that's what makes me put it kind of in that middle territory is that they've not done those USBs and those lighting elements in all of the Murphy beds. So there's only certain resorts that they've done them in. Uh, I think Boulder Ridge was one where we noticed that the USB was not part of the room. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it, it be consistent in what these Murphy beds are going to be. Riviera, uh, the do the resort studios, uh, not resort studios. What are the tower, tower studios? Tower, tower I, why studio. do we keep calling them different things? You're just confusing me on purpose, Disney Vacation Club. Uh, <laughs> but the tower studios, I think, are the ones that have done it right. They have the lighting built into the room. They have the USB charging out, and it's built into the. There's like even little shelves back there mm. where you can put little things, and it's. Perfect. I thought I saw it. I thought I saw it on Amy's video. No, it wasn't there. 
Uh, there was, I don't know if it was that one or maybe it was Grand Floridian where we were recently at. Um, it might be the, it might be some of the refurbishments that they're doing where they're just popping the Murphy bed into the current room. So it might've been Grand Floridian. Boulder Ridge might have it. Um, Beach Club, probably not going to have it since that's kind of a soft goods refurbishment. Um, and they have been, at least for these soft goods refreshes, they've been putting, the Murphy beds in, but maybe they're not doing the electrical or, or the full, full setup that they've been doing in the other resorts. I don't know. Yeah. It's not consistent, but at the end of the day, I think, I think the reason that they made sure they had all those things in the Riviera tower studio Murphy beds was because that was it. That was your bed. So there was nowhere to put a nightstand or anything like that. So, so I guess mm-hmm. I kind of understand um, but you do, you do have to share, you know, in like the Grand Floridian one, you have to share charging and nightstand with the person yeah. in the, in the main bed. But overall Murphy beds, you get a real mattress instead of sleeping on a couch bed, sleeping on those couch beds. We only, we've only done it one time cause we took our moms and we stayed in a, in a two bedroom at Jumbo house and we gave them each a bedroom and we slept on the couch bed. And I swear you can feel like the metal, like yes. the bars. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Jeff, yeah, what are your that. thoughts on the Murphys? Yeah, I, I, I love them with a caveat. Um, I, I do. I love them. We stayed at Riviera in a one bedroom and we spent Hurricane Ian on, on the Murphy bed so that we could see out the window and watch the rain and watch the TV at the same time. They do have the charging <laughs> ports, you know, but, um, I love them. They're way more comfortable to Amy's point as far as sleeping on. Those sofa beds are brutal. Um, it's like riding the Matterhorn after work. <laughs> can't walk for three days. But my caveat is Old Key West. Because right now that's the only studio left that still has two queen beds. And I really don't want that to go away. I, mm. I, love, I love those rooms for yeah. that reason. Um, those rooms are big enough at Old Key West. They really don't need... To save space. So yeah. maybe they'll stay. <laughs> Do we need a couch there? I don't know. Those those still have the old TV. They even have DVD players still at Old Key West. Old Key <laughs> West. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Was, Old Key Seriously. West was like the re- like the first refurb that I remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? Since we became members. And so once all the rest of the resorts are done, I feel like that'll be up again. Yeah, we need to get back to Old Key West because it's starting to look older and older, just, but just I just don't it, take Jeff's But it also away. Is, is what's so great about that resort is it's like stuck in time. It's like timeless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's why people love it. Like, honestly, there's just a cult following of old Key West people. Um, all of their pictures are up. You can walk into Olivia's right on the wall there. You've got, you know, everyone's, everyone's pictures up there that have been owners over the years. And, uh, it's just this, I don't know, this pride of owning that original Disney Vacation Club property. but it is, such a, it is such a pride thing too, Paul. And it's funny because I'll have hundreds of members over the years will tell me and say, you know, we bought it, Old Key West, we stay there. They always try out whatever the new resort is. They'll always try it out. And I'll say, how'd you like it? And they'll say, yeah, it was nice. We're going to go back to old, old, old Key West. Like, that's it. It doesn't matter. It could be Alani, it could be Riviera, it could be anywhere else, but you give people that one-two punch of here's your rooms are 20% bigger. Oh, and by the way, it's 20% less points than any of these newer mm-hmm. vacation club resorts. It's a it's a slam dunk. So yeah. So let's jump from the oldest Disney Vacation Club property to two of the newest announced Disney Vacation Club properties and talk about them kind of in tandem. Uh, we'll go around the room and give us love it, don't love it, related to the new cabins coming to Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and the Polynesian DVC Tower. Um, so kind of two different concepts that they've they've come along with, you know. Polynesian, obviously, tried and true Disney Vacation Club property. But again, people love what that resort stands for and kind of the the feel that you have associated with it and how it's stuck in that, what I would call like the 1970s tiki culture vibe. And and and, and my grandma, I've, I've said this before, my grandma had a tiki bar in her basement. And like I walk, I, I used to walk into it and I was like, I'm at the Polynesian. Yep, I'm here. Um, and so that versus these new, what I would call glamping cabins, which are coming to Fort Wilderness, which completely, I think, changed the vibe of Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. So Panda, give us your thoughts on where DVC is headed in the future. 
I'm giving you another love it because I like the way these new cabins looked on the, you know, the artist rendering. Uh, and I don't like the cabins that are there now. I just don't. They feel tiny to me and I, I just don't like it. So I'm really hopeful on these new ones that I see. I don't know if we've seen, I haven't seen inside pictures. I think I just saw the outside artist rendering, but I'm liking that a lot. I know a lot of people are going to miss the cabins because they got a, they do have a cult following. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jeff, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm on board. I love them. And I'm really excited for, for the Fort Wilderness cabins, especially. I'm also holding out some funds for the Poly Tower. Um, I love the Polynesian Resort, but there's just not enough room types there for what my family uses it for. So to have the options of some one and two bedrooms without having to go full bungalow is really great. But as far as the cabins go, like I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it's a great idea. It kind of gave the feeling that like maybe they just went to Ikea and bought one of those rooms they have on display and are putting them on a truck. <laughs> but I hope when they get here, they're actually as good as, as they say they're going to be because I'll stay there for sure. Plus dogs. You know, yeah. dogs. Yeah. That's a big one. I'm I'm just waiting for the day that someone posts a picture of one of these things rolling down I four headed to Disney, and like that's that's the news story of the day. Is the cabins are cabins are incoming? <laughs> Here they come because they are being prefabbed off site. So Panda. Well, I I didn't mention the Poly. I thought we were just talking about the uh, the Fort Wilderness cabins, but the Poly Tower right now I don't love it. I think it's hovering like over the the wedding pavilion like too much. Right. They can win me over if they make it look good. So I don't know what's going to happen with it right now. Yeah. I don't love it. And over in the DVC fan Facebook, uh, Mary Liddig, who I know Derek just actually got to have uh, breakfast with not too long ago. She did a wonderful update on the Poly Tower just the other day. And she made a note to the fact that if you are in one of those, not, not Disney Vacation Club longhouses, but mm -hmm. one of those direct paying an arm and a leg longhouses that are over on that side where the new tower is going to be, you are going to open your blinds and see nothing but this tower and be looking directly into whomever is staying in those because it is very close to those properties. Um, and uh, that's going to be a tough sell to spend a thousand dollars a night or whatever the going rate for those rooms are when that's what your view is. And that's kind of what your experience is going to be. I don't care how many Moanas you throw into the, into the room and the decor, it's, it's going to kind of affect that, that, that experience, but maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe five years from now, all of Polynesian Disney vacation club. And then I want a the tower view. I want a tower view room. I want to view the other tower. <laughs> I want a tower view room. <laughs> Derek, what do you, you know thoughts? what else I thought about? Just, just very quickly, the monorail situation. Some nights when there's a Christmas party or a Halloween party, yeah. getting on that monorail is tough. What I'm guessing is that they will not fill two cabins at some point until they get to the poly and then open them up or save them just for the Grand Floridian just to open up two cabins maybe. That might yeah. be a thing in the monorail's future that cabins yeah. may be assigned to resorts. That's, I, a, that's a good point. I'd advocate for that today because there's still, there's still times where – by the time the monorail either gets to Grand Floridian or uh, is, is coming back around, it's uh, it's completely full and you're not getting on that monorail and going anywhere. Yeah. No. You wonder why the walkway shut to uh, Shades of Green. It's not a safety thing. I think it's definitely because we want to limit how many people come and use the monorail yep. after the tower is built. Yep. Point. Derek, what are your thoughts on these new properties? Polynesian's your beloved resort, so... All right, so I will start with the cabins first and foremost. I love them, so I think it's great. I don't have any trips. I've never stayed in one of the original cabins, just kind of like for what John said. I'm sure they're amazing, and people out there love them, and for all the right reasons, I'm sure. I've just never done it. However, now that this is part of Disney Vacation Club, I will 100% look to use my points to stay in those cabins. So that is a big, big plus up for me. Um, and I think we've even talked about it too on the show that I think this resort, the whole Fort Wilderness area, I could see it becoming just because around that Halloween time, around that Christmas time, it is like a different world in there. Just if you've never seen all the mm -hmm. Halloween decor that goes on and the Halloween parades and the Christmas decor and everything else, I could totally see trying to get into one of these cabins during yeah. those seasons, almost like trying to get into the boardwalk or beach club during like the food and wine festival. So I'm personally very, very excited about the cabins. Now, on the other hand, my heart completely crumbles and falls mm -hmm. over the whole entire desk because the new Poly Tower, no. It is a big no 
for me. It is just taking away everything that I love about the Polynesian resort that I think the Polynesian, unlike any other resort when you're there, because it's not a high rise, because the buildings are so low to the ground. And when the tiki torches are at night and you look across and you see the castle, it used to be you just saw the Grand Floridian and then you saw the contemporary. Many folks will remember being able to walk from the Polynesian to, to the Grand before the DVC Grand was built. It was just an open beach. And it was unlike any other place on earth because there was just chairs out there and little cabanas that you could just go grab a bottle of wine and sit on this beach that stretched all the way from the Polynesian to the Grand. Now they threw in the Grand Floridian building, which we're all used to kind of seeing. And yes, it kind of fits in. But now you're adding this whole other building that I get it, that people are excited because now there's Polynesian one bedrooms and there's going to be regular two bedrooms. But uh, I actually now have a new favorite phrase of all time when Jeff said he doesn't have to go, quote unquote, full on bungalow. I think I'm going to be making a T-shirt for that one. So uh, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I think it just looks too much like a regular hotel room, takes away everything from what the original Polynesian stands for. So that's my two cents is a big. Yeah. I'm, let's I'm just, really let's just hope that they do it right, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we learn some more about these properties coming up in the upcoming weeks. I know we've got the uh, destination D 23 event coming up here in about two weeks. I think it is. Uh, there's going to be a big panel on Saturday for that. I think that would be a great time to announce maybe some Polynesian information. Um, and then hopefully come the condo association meeting in December, maybe we just get some, you know, pictures of what the inside of the cabins are going to look like, what the, what the boardwalk refurbishment is going to look like. Yeah. Amy, what are your, what are your thoughts on these? Well, so, uh, in terms of the Polynesian, I, I completely feel for the way Derek feels, but even though I'm, I'm excited about it because right. it does, it's, it's completely changed the landscape of that resort. and it's just, it changes the feeling and the culture and you know what I mean? Of the long houses and the great ceremonial house is supposed to be what stuck out above them all. So I do like that, that part kind of makes me sad. Um, I'm trying to be more open about like, Oh, let's see what they do. I hope they do it right. Like Panda said, when I, when I first heard about this, I was thinking Grandestino and I absolutely love Grandestino and Coronado Springs. And I love the, the, the colors and the just everything about that tower is gorgeous. And so I kind of was hoping it would be something like that. But I can I, now that we see it kind of towering over everything and just it's just massive. Um, I, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I'm still excited to stay there, but I totally get what you're saying, Derek. The cabins, Fort Wilderness, I am so excited about that. Fort Wilderness is such a cool resort. And I've never been a, like, I've never enjoyed camping. I've always told Paul, it was like, I, I was a Girl Scout for 10 years when I was a kid. And then I was in my high school's bluegrass, my high school had a bluegrass band and we would go to different bluegrass festivals and, and camp around and stay in tents and get, you know, anything that could possibly happen to you that's bad when you camp, like getting flooded and having to camp on rocks and snow. And like, I've done it. And I just, I do not, I do not want to go to a campsite and stay, but in a cabin, like I, I would do that. And we've always wanted to try the cabins out that mm -hmm. are, that are there now, but we're probably not going to get to, but DVC is going to make it more possible for us to actually go and stay at that resort and actually stay in a cabin, just make it more attainable. And I just want to bring my dogs to Disney one time. It, it would probably be a one and done because they're they're kind of a they're kind of a lot of of work, but just we just want to do it just I, just one time. I don't know though. When you I, we're going to crunch the numbers when it comes to the cabins because if this saves me versus paying Rover to watch my dogs, then it may be a <laughs> nice viable solution. So we, right, I know. If yep. we brought them, we could not. They, we would. It would be. We're in this cabin for the whole time we'd that be, they're here. Like, we'd, we'd be hiring. A, we'd be hiring a rover to come to the Disney Fort Wilderness yeah. cabins to watch our dogs. Then uh, <laughs> from from that location, 
Uh, but, but yeah, that resort just has so many amenities that, you know, there was, there's, there was kayaking and things going down at the lake and there was, uh, you know, there's a dog park and yeah. there's tons of playgrounds for kids and lots of places to walk. It's just, it's very, it's just a beautiful place. And I love, I just, I love the atmosphere. I love the music that they play around the property. Just absolutely love that place. And I agree with what you said earlier, Derek. I, I think that how the, the, the week throughout Halloween, the, the week throughout mm -hmm. Christmas, these are going to, th those are going to be the, the blow away weeks on the point charts for, uh, yeah. for, for these new cabins. <laughs> they're, they're definitely going yeah. to be the high end of the spectrum uh, because that's actually, I, I think that's part of this plan with these cabins is that they're trying to appeal to the people that historically year after year vacation in these cabins, people book a year in advance, like yeah. to get their, get their cabins and go back and that's their vacation year after year after year. And they move into these things. They bring their, you know, not just the cabins, but there's people that love the campgrounds. There's people that love the RV section of, of Fort Wilderness. They rent their golf carts. They turn them into just things that you would think are in a Disney parade. Um, <laughs> that the how some of these people go out all out amazing. on these golf carts and things, just absolutely amazing. Um, and so it's definitely going to be a, a fun new element of. Disney Vacation Club. Uh, I will wrap us up with one more love it or don't love it tonight. And that's going to be non Walt Disney World DVC properties. Now we've seen the newest one of these come to the Disneyland Resort area, the Disneyland Hotel. That'll be opening here at the end of September. But historically speaking, these properties have not, I would say, done as well as the Walt Disney World properties. But as DVC members and people that love Disney Vacation Club, I'm curious to get our our vibes on, you know, do we love these properties? Do we enjoy using our points there? Um, and Jeff, I'll start with you on this question. I love them. I, In fact, I wrote an article for DVC Fan about a year ago, you know, speculating if I was in charge of the world, where <laughs> I would put next five um, non-Walt Disney World properties. And that's because... That was after my first trip to Vero Beach. And I just, I know Derek loves Vero Beach. <laughs> I quickly became a fan. Um, we're going to Hilton Head at the end of the month and, Aww. you know, Alani, all those places. Like, I am all in. I think they should put them everywhere <laughs> and <laughs> give me an excuse to go see other places because I think mm -hmm. they're great. I'll add, I'll add a second part to that question, though. And I'll say, do you think that? we will see Disney ever build one of these again? Yeah, probably not if I'm being honest. And it, you know, it speaks to what you were saying. They haven't really done as well. I think if they did it right, we could see some more, but I, I don't know. I don't know how many more we can fit on Disney world right now and not just keep the lines getting longer and longer. But mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, unless something changes with their business model, I, I don't see it. Unfortunately, Amy, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm with Jeff. I wish that they they had more. And, and I think that a lot of it is, so when people first become DVC members and they're just all about Disney, you know, for the most part, it's Disney World, Disney World, Disney World. Even, even like a lot of people don't even go to Disneyland. Um, but it's all about the parks. It's all about being at Disney World. And so a lot of people kind of look at you like you're crazy if you want to go out and like go to other places. And once you're a member for so long and you've gone to Disney for, for so long, for so many times, you know, obviously we still love Disney. We live right here, but it is nice to go out and, and see other things, but still have that Disney service, still have that Disney touch, that Disney comfort. And, and that's what we felt when we went to Alani. We felt that comfort that, you know, that Disney service that, that you don't get everywhere else. We're Vero Beach. And we just really loved both of those experiences. We haven't been to Hilton Head yet. It's actually the only one uh, that we haven't stayed at yet, but I really want to. But yeah, you're right, Jeff. I wish that they would put them, you know, in a ski lodge somewhere or just anything. I just, it would be cool to have the Disney experience somewhere else. Yep. And and I'll, I'll agree with that. I absolutely love the properties. I love all of the uh, properties we've not been to Hilton Head. That's the only one we've not gone to. Uh, we're going back to Vero Beach very, very soon. We loved our Alani trip. Just absolutely 
amazing. We own at Grand Californian. Uh, do I think that they will ever do this again? Probably not. But I will put a plea out there. And people think I'm crazy for this because they're like, what if it sinks? But if Disney Vacation Club could <coughs> find a way to bring Disney Cruise Line, a deeded interest in Disney Cruise Line into the Disney Vacation Club fold, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know exactly how they would do it. It'd have to be like a portion of a ship or something of that nature. Um, but I think that it would be a brilliant idea because I, I always, I, the, the more I think about it, I keep going back to our recent Alaska trip when we saw five, six Disney vacation club book bags. And so people love people that are Disney vacation club love traveling and they love traveling to new destinations and doing fun new things. And I think the cruise line aspect of it just opens that up a whole lot more than, say, a Hilton Head or a Vero Beach, which is a, just a very mm -hmm. specific static location. Hawaii, a little bit different. Um, and obviously Disneyland, a little bit different. But I think there's an opportunity there if they can just figure out the logistics yeah. of it. I think that like that's Disney is about like transporting you to all these places. You know, you have Jumbo House, Animal Kingdom Lodge, and it's transforms you to this African Savannah Lodge. And you have, you know, just all these all these different locations in the World Showcase and all these countries. And I, like when you go to Disney, it sparks this desire to like see the real, you know, the real things and, and to to just get out there more and, and to travel more. So yeah. it would be cool to see him expand and expand internationally even. Yeah, which. for sure. Panda, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, Jeff said everything that I would have said. I enjoy knowing that it's there, even though I haven't used it yet, but I would definitely go to Vero Beach or, you know, what is it, Hilton Head. I like knowing that that's there and I would definitely choose that over a, you know, Holiday Inn or a Marriott because it's Disney. So yeah. I don't want to repeat exactly what Amy and uh, Jeff said, but that's exactly how I feel. So I like that. Well, and you've been to Alani you've, and you've had an absolutely amazing trip there. It was great. That's what I wanted to ask. Derek, you've been to Alani? No, I never have. Okay. I was Because I was going to say, if the Poly Tower turned out a little bit like Alani, you would probably accept it more. I don't know if that's going to happen based on the concept art. But God, I wish they would take a cue from that resort. Mm -hmm. I'll that be, would be cool. I'll be sending a proposal right after this meeting to get get approval for all of us to do a remote DVC <gasps> show. Yeah, we Alani. don't know anything about it. We 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 have to see it in person. <laughs> yeah, we've we've not covered nearly enough of that resort in terms of video content. And I'll video. bring my camera. <laughs> I can go. To, I can go tomorrow. So you just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever. Derek Vero Beach is your baby. So. Yeah. She is, she is my baby. And that's what I can tell all those folks. And Amy, you kind of summed it up perfectly is that when folks get their DVC membership, they're so excited because what there's like 10 different places here at say Walt Disney World to be able to use them on. Like, oh my God, I want to stay here. And then I want to stay there. It's for me, it was when I used my points for the first time it was when my son was two years old. Now I just dropped him off at college. He's 18, Florida State, <laughs> uh, was using the points at Vero Beach. So it was using the points at Vero Beach. We immediately fell in love with it. It's just two hours outside of Disney. And those people that have been there, I can tell you, if you want to know how beloved Vero Beach is, just spend any amount of time in one of the Vero Beach hot tubs, just talking <laughs> to the owners of people that use their points to stay at Vero Beach. Because once you go to Vero once, you're honest to God, you're going to go again. If I don't get to go at least two to three times per year for whether it's, you know, two nights or four nights. Uh, it's everything that you love about Disney, but it's in a smaller environment. The cast is, I think, better than any cast at any DVC resort at Walt Disney World. I think the, the Vero Beach cast and I think the Hilton Head cast, they're such amazing people that have been doing their job and working there for a long, long time for the most part. And they just take such pride in it. Uh, Hilton Head is also an amazing resort. And again, I have people all the time, once they go once, they're like, Jerick, I think I want to buy some points at Hilton Head because it's hard to get in in the summertime. So it's it just adds to your portfolio of what you love about being a Disney Vacation Club member. As much as you loved it, using it at Walt Disney World or even Disneyland, once you try one of these outside places, which I firmly believe they ain't ever going to build another one. 
Mm-hmm. They ain't ever going to build another one. So just enjoy the ones that we have that expire in the year 2042, because I don't think they're going to build another one, uh, but just use it. And of course, in the meantime, that shameless plug, until they come up with Paul's cruise ship program, uh, we have a wonderful swap program. Right, Paul? Correct. <laughs> over at over at DVC Rental Store, we do have an amazing swap program where you can take your Disney Vacation Club points, <laughs> rent them out, and get on that cruise ship. All that I ask at the end of the day, please call me before you book a cruise directly with Disney Vacation Club and use three times as many points because that's the savings that that swap program gets you. Um, and, you know, uh, definitely uh, head to the DVC rental store website to learn more about both that and all of the swap opportunities. Although I've been told not to use that word, I still always use it. Um, I like it. All of the, it apparently means something else to someone else. I don't know. Um, but uh, full on bungalow, full on bungalow. <laughs> But yeah, head to dvcrentalstore.com to learn more about using your using your points for a uh, using your points for a cruise swap and other things like that. But I I hope uh, you the viewers out there and the listeners enjoyed this. Love it, don't love it. Uh, if you think of a better name, let us know. We kind of like this one at the moment, but I think it was kind of fun, and I like uh, the little the little symbols <laughs> that yeah the crumbling heart that Derek has come up with. So we're gonna we're gonna try to find. We're gonna have some graphic designer come up with those, and then you can like press a button on your keyboard, and those come up on your screen when we say something. We're gonna we're gonna get high technical here with the DVC show in our, in our new in our new world. And uh, keep in mind, uh, since you all have stuck around and listened to us ramble this long in this episode, we are still working on a studio space. We have actually located one, and I have to go scope it out and 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 kind of make it ours and design what we want the uh, want the space to look like and how we can make it uh, a fun little roundtable discussion or maybe make it a little living room-like vibe and, and kind of just be comfortable. I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of different ideas in the works, but we found a space. Jeff needs and, uh, a gilded throne to sit on. A crown and a staff. and <laughs> Scepter. Scepter, yes. Scepter. Oh, my. Yeah, I've not, been, I've, not been get, <laughs> I've not been given a budget yet. So, I mean, sky's the limit. Let's just propose it and let's see what happens. So, <laughs> send, me, send me your wish list. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the DVC Show, everyone. Thank you all uh, for joining us. Uh, this, was, this was a blast. And uh, we will see you all next week. <laughs>